Today, let's talk about how to invest £50,000 in the buy to let UK property market. What sort of things should you be considering and what specifically should you be investing in? Hi, my name is Tony Law from Your First Four Houses, and I teach people how to build a small property portfolio that generates a great income for them, so they can give up the day job if they wish, because they're now financially free. If this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click that bell notification icon so that you don't miss out on any of the free content that I give you each and every week. So let's just very quickly set this up. Let's imagine that you've got £50,000 to invest in property with little chance of getting any more money, at least in the short term. And you want to build a small but profitable portfolio that can replace your job-based income. And you want to do this as quickly as possible. Well, the first thing I have to say is that obviously that £50,000 needs to work really, really hard for you. So let me give you a bunch of ideas that I'm sure are going to help, most of which I've actually done myself. So the first of these is to buy property substantially below market value and then refinance. And this is exactly how I started off. The truth is, I didn't believe that there were any such deals like this out there. <laughs> and anybody that knows me knows that that's the case. But I've now done it many, many times. The key is to get really good at finding truly motivated sellers. And please believe me when I say these types of deals are out there. Second is to add real value and then refinance. And so here I'm not talking about just a lick of paint. So maybe you buy somewhere at full market price or ideally get a little bit of a discount on it and then you add real tangible value to the property. I know I talk about that a lot. <laughs> so for example, maybe you go for planning to build in the garden. You don't necessarily build in the garden, you just get the planning. That alone will add substantial value and I've certainly done that. Or maybe you reconfigure the internal layout and get an extra bedroom or two in there. Or maybe you do a loft or garage conversion. And in some areas, this can add real value. Or maybe that you convert the house into two flats, perish the thought, etc., etc., etc. Once this work is complete, you then refinance and pull most or all of your money back out of the deal. So once again, you can use that money to go and buy the next property. Maybe yours is a rent to rent strategy. This can really replace your income quickly. If an average rent to rent costs, say, five to ten thousand pounds to set it all up once you've included everything, you could maybe get five to ten properties for fifty thousand pounds, couldn't you? And each one, and if each one cash flows, say, five hundred pounds to a thousand pounds per calendar month, well, let's be really honest, that's more than enough to replace the average UK income. Perhaps you buy a flat or a house and run it as serviced accommodation. £50,000 is more than enough to get you one or maybe even two flats in some areas. And honestly, the return on investment on service accommodation can be absolutely huge. Also, if it's outside of your area, could you maybe use this as an occasional kind of holiday home or escape for yourselves? By the way, if you're, if you're finding this video helpful, I would love it if you could take a moment just to click on that like button. It really helps me if that's okay. You could maybe buy a smaller HMO, say a four to six bed type place. Obviously where you're wanting to invest will have a huge impact on what you can actually afford. But in some areas, you can get a huge lump of a property and make a really good cash flow if you're starting off with an investment of £50,000. Could you use property options to control property rather than buying them? Honestly, in the current market, options really should be a tool that you use wherever possible. And £50,000 can potentially get you a lot of property options, depending on what you're actually looking at. Will they work in all scenarios? Of course they won't. <laughs> But honestly, they will work in some. Could you buy garages and rent them out over the long or short term? <laughs> now, I know this one is a little bit of an unusual one. I was sitting down with a really successful property investor recently, and we were sort of chatting things over. And they were talking all about the huge return on investment that they were getting on the garages that they were renting out. 
And in some areas, you can play the long game here. And maybe with those garages that you've just gone and bought, which you would get for the, the kind of investment amount that we're talking about here, maybe you go for a change of use and actually get some planning on there. If you're renting them out and getting a great income from them, does it matter if it takes you one or two years to get planning to maybe build some flats or a house or two? Now, I'm not saying this strategy is for everyone, but honestly, if you've got 50,000 pounds to invest, it's at least worth exploring this idea. Why not buy a shop and convert it into residential? <laughs> Have you seen how many empty shops there are out there at the moment? Let's be honest, the high street is really struggling. Now, obviously, most of these won't work well to convert a ha that shop into residential. But if you think about it, if you're driving around, you'll notice that some shops are clearly, or were clearly, houses. They've been converted into a shop. Might it be worth looking at buying some of these and converting them back into residential? And with a commercial purchase like this, you'll usually get a lot more square meterage for your £50,000 investment. Plus, there are some really big tax advantages, but obviously speak to your tax advisor or accountant regarding these. Could you buy somewhere to live in and develop over time? So here, we really are playing the longer game. Now, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Our own homes are not supposed to be viewed as an asset, are they? But I've never really understood this, if I'm being honest with you. I've bought houses over the years and I've lived in them whilst adding real tangible value. And I've made some serious financial gains. Sure, sometimes it can be a bit of a challenge to live in a place while you're actually doing it up. Well, when you're just starting out, why not do this? Why not give this a go? So maybe you buy somewhere with a really big garden and you get planning for a house. Again, I've certainly done that. Or maybe you add a bedroom or two or you convert the loft. I know this isn't for everyone, but if you have an understanding partner, and that's crucial, <laughs> there are some really big tax advantages for doing so. Plus it also means that you can kind of, you can kind of leap up the property ladder rather than taking slightly smaller incremental steps. Honestly, 50,000 pounds is more than enough to get you going. It's more than enough to build a property portfolio that can cash flow and give you a longer term passive income. But if you are wanting to build that long term passive income, you've got to invest smartly. Otherwise, 50,000 pounds is gone. The last thing that you want to do, can I respectfully suggest, is to buy a property that doesn't give you a great cash flow and ties up all of your money for years and years and years. Can I respectfully suggest that's not a particularly smart way to invest. In my online property masterclass, I cover all of these subjects and so much more, including how to set yourself up properly as a business, how to find incredible deals, how to negotiate fantastic win-win solutions with sellers, how to get estate agents to bring you discounted properties, and even how to fund everything. And so if you'd like to book a 10 minute phone call with me to find out if this course could work for you, simply click the link here or in the description box below to book a time slot.